Attention sleepless nights. Thank you for consuming this OSI 74 product broadcast live from the Black Knight satellite. For optimum performance and safety, your host, Mr. Lobo, asks that you please listen to these instructions carefully. When in a hospital or other healthcare facility, observe the restrictions on the use of electronic devices. Switch off before boarding an aircraft to prevent interference with communication systems. Do not operate this device in the presence of flammable gases or fumes, chemical plants, or where blasting operations are in progress. Always listen hands-free while driving a vehicle. Failure to observe these instructions may lead to immediate termination. It's time now for the show to begin. Thank you. Have a very pleasant evening. You're not dreaming. You're listening to the Sleepless Nights podcast. I'm your host, Mr. Lobo. And somewhere in this room is my co-host, Paul Sanders of Bestow TV. Hey, I got, I got, hey, hey I, I got some really important news. I got something really, really exciting to tell you. Something exciting, something Paul. Exciting. Really worth interrupting the introduction yes, of the show. Yes, about? because people need to know this at the top. We, we, don't, right need to at bury, the top. we don't need to bury this. Okay. We shouldn't right. bury this. What's happening? The, the, the number one downloaded podcast. Oh, no. Number one downloaded episode. Yes. Check out these, check out these papers. Uh-huh. Where are papers? Whatever. But in that binder with the garbage bag. It's a box of, band, <laughs> box of Band-Aids here. Number one downloaded according to iTunes, I guess this past month, however their thing yeah. is. Is Obi One is the loneliest number. Oh, are you the one that you did by yourself? So I am out of here. I'm doing my own podcast. I'm wow. going to do the Wakeless Day podcast. Wakeless from now. Day podcast. That's gonna be mine. <laughs> you can have it. Wakeless day. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. Well, I mean, look at those numbers. I mean, it's awesome. Yeah, it's like, well, you know, that's the top, top, wait a top. Second. You know, I'm above Sleazy. Yeah. I'm above Carlo, whoever the fuck his name is. No, no, no. Carlos Borloff. Okay. Above the one where we didn't talk about Infinity War. Yeah. But, well, that one didn't come out yet. So. Oh, okay. So, okay. Yeah. So we can't count that one. So we one. can't count that. Well, one. does now look how much of the show has been listened to? Oh, uh, we don't need to. We don't need to look at those numbers. I think we probably should. No, no. How, All we need to we... know is it's the best downloaded the most, episode. The best downloaded. So or the am... most downloaded. What was downloaded once? Watch, watch my ass go out that door because I'm out of here. <laughs> uh, I don't want watching your ass, Paul, for anything. First of all, yes. especially without any pants. Yeah. Well, you got to keep it PG. My mom's listening now. So. Oh. So she must have downloaded it a bunch of times. She was the person who downloaded it, right? <laughs> so our one loud download was probably yes. your mother. And she still didn't listen to it all the way through. <laughs> they didn't listen all the way through? It may be the top one, but it was only listening through 50%. Oh, <laughs> only half. I listened to half a show. So I don't know. Did, did, they, did they come in thinking... Oh hey, it's the brand new episode of, of the of the podcast, and they're talking. Obi wan is, is the loneliest number is the title, so they're like, oh, they're finally talking about Star, Star Wars. Star Wars, yeah. So we got all these people listening for Star Wars, and they're like, what's this bullshit? And then it's just like <laughs> Paul fumbling through tin cans, trying to find some more canned stuff. Wow, yeah. So that's my news, and that okay. was and that was probably your mom, huh? And that was probably right. your mom. Can we stop talking about my mom now. <laughs> Now, is your, is your, what does your mom think of the podcast? She's Paul? getting an ed- education about her son. We'll just talk about it. We'll just say that. Can we move on? No, no. <laughs> I, I don't want to hear this. An education She's, about her son, I, uh, her I, grown I, man, <laughs> son, her, her grown adult <laughs> child. So, how's your day? <laughs> I want to know what what is what's the I heard, verdict? I, I heard what's that we, the were, we were getting other things and coming in and you you haven't heard anything. What's, I what's, I want to know. I want to know. <laughs> uh, that is that is you going down in flames on this podcast. What what happened with mom? Huh? I, Let's talk. I, about I don't it. know what you're talking about. She downloaded the episode a lot. Did she not like the the show? I plead the fifth. <laughs> <laughs> oh really dixie's dad likes us well dixie's dad likes you yeah yeah but your mom doesn't appreciate yeah. your your humor she, she sides with the rest of you too too irreverent <laughs> too irreverent shocking and irreverent you're too much frank talk yeah 
I, See, I that's I, the problem. I think I said I talked too much about my Frank. Uh, oh, no, no. Well, the pantsless thing. Maybe we should clarify the pantsless aspect of, of, of Paul. I thought we've, we've clarified, but like I said before, everybody's podcast is the first podcast. So Everyone's podcast is the first podcast. We, we like to call pa- Paul the pantsless producer. Mr. Lobo likes to wear suits and slacks and proper Christian clothes. Paul likes things a little looser. Paul likes to wear uh, sweats and cargo shorts and uh, uh, chef pants, anything but (laughs) (laughs) pajamas. Wear chef pants once to the show and see what the hell happens. (laughs) Anything but 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 proper trousers on the show. (laughs) And so uh, jokingly, we say Paul doesn't wear pants. But in reality, Paul wears pants he just doesn't I wear, wear cloth yeah you, you cover you're covered up you I mean, it's a thong you, but, you know. yeah. <laughs> it's not yeah. my fault it's, uh, more, it's not my fault that it fits backwards thong the thong 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 it's so thong a very thong this, whole thing is, this thong. is very 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 thong so um so uh, yeah we, so, we we get sometimes get was it is so it green is that the proper range or is it blue blue we got blue we got blue yeah. we get we get blue with it with the things a little I think, blue i think that got embarrassing yeah and i get you know you don't want to think of your son not wearing pants on a, on on radio or whatever this is on 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 uh electrons when you're when you're uh painting the theater of the mind yeah <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're with broad strokes. <laughs> Let's just leave that hang there for a while. So mm. gross. Why did you have to go with hang? There? I know, I know. I can't stop. <laughs> All right, all right. So, so let's, other than the mom's review, we got a lot of other we good did. reviews. We did good people, reaction to the podcast. Like uh, other than pa- Paul's mom is disappointed, but um, you know, just about the pantsless part. Yeah, well, that's good. She should be proud of you, Paul. <laughs> you got some fan art t- yeah, this week. Can we, can we call it art? No. It's abbreviation of fan art. No. We should collect a lot of arts all over. No. We have a whole room no. of art. Even if you say F arts, that's still kind of insulting. I don't think we should call them f- arts. Why not? not it's f- not arts. like I'm saying farts. It's f- arts. <laughs> Paul, why is everything f- arts with you? It's either... You know, <laughs> it's, you got, you got, you I, I either know. I was going to go for the, the, the raunchy uh, joke and I'm like, my mom might be yeah, listening to this. <laughs> yeah. Gonna drop I've, had, it. I've had somebody say to me, why is there, why is everything that comes out of your, your mouth? Yeah, out of your mouth, you revolves about it. <laughs> Let me try that again. How come everything that comes out of your mouth either revolves around coming into or out of your ass? <laughs> oh, God, Paul. Oh, my God. <laughs> So, um, so, so, how, so we've been getting so, some, uh, there it is. Yeah. That's our whole show. We just bombed. Yep. Good night, folks. Good night. You have been listening to the Sleepless Nights podcast, or should we say, podcast. Podcast. Emphasis on the odd. We can't, we gotta keep going. We got time. Really? Yeah. We gotta keep going. Yeah. We, we're not, oh, we're not done. We're not I was done. ready to be done. You're I was, listening I was to the Sleepless Nights <laughs> podcast. Um, so, all right. So, so I guess we're, we're talking not about done. art. No, for arts. Of arts. Paul, let us not call them for If arts. they were in school, it would be sh- art. No, sh- this is no. We're not having sh- that the brief- shark week. No, would that be a abbreviation of, of school art? Would be sh- art. No, Paul. Come on, let's not be gross. Okay. I, mean, or, I it, want a whole room of, sh- of art. Not so much the sh- arts. Then it'll sh- be arts are embarrassing. And then it'll be the mix arts. Mix right? arts. <laughs> no, the mix arts. <laughs> You gotta, you gotta, you gotta, up, yeah, a little bit, yeah. uh huh, uh huh. It's like it's I, like what Star Trek that all, all the all the words have the, the, the apostrophe in the middle. Yes, or is that Star Wars? Star Wars always well, has the apostrophe. I think Klingon kind of has those weird apostrophes too. And Klingon has the apostrophes, and Star Wars has the dash. I think you're, I, we're I think we're gonna you're, go with the dash. Oh for the wow! Arts. But we're not talking about Star Trek. And we're not talking about <laughs> sha'arts either, or you know, which is why they banned the McRib because of the sha'arts that were happening. That's yeah. why you can only have the McRib once a year because that's what happens to you the rest of the yeah, <laughs> yeah, the, rest the, of the time. The laundry bill got too <laughs> outrageous. So tell so, us about a f- art. How how? So we have this fan art for the podcast, and I believe it's the first. I you know maybe someone correct me if I'm wrong, or if someone's got some some dated copyrighted 
fan art from before uh, this, this, but uh, Kelly DeMall sent us a lovely drawing. Thanks, Kelly, for your art. Mm, excuse me. Well, that's not nice. Kelly's just hearing me like burp up my lunch here. <laughs> Kelly She's DeMall. She's not the one smelling it. <laughs> <laughs> it's better than smelling f your f arts. F arts. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go back to talking about Kelly's f arts. <laughs> okay. So, so uh, th this is on some nice kind of uh, a cream colored paper. Almost looks like the kind of paper you'd have in like a school. Um, and a nice pencil drawing of uh, Mr. Lobo. I'm looking almost like a, like a Disney prince. This is a very flattering kind of uh, cartoony uh, looking Mr. Lobo. And uh, I've got a very quizzical look. And right behind me is Isor, the outer space monster, uh, sort of uh, kaiju dragonish monster. And he's holding a pair of pants in its mouth. Mm -hmm. And I believe it says, uh, don't tell me, he's right behind me and he's got Paul's pants. Something like that. Mm -hmm. So you've got a monster <laughs> both right behind Mr. Lobo <laughs> holding Paul's pants. <laughs> Completely referencing not only Mr. Lobo and how I look on cinema insomnia, mm -hmm. but uh, our producer Paul and, and his problem without and I, pants. And also OSI with Isor. And also OSI with Isor. So it's a very beautiful yeah. piece of, of... And I think of, this is uh, my first for art too. So I don't think I've ever, anybody's you, no ever... No one has ever referenced you in a piece of no, I think for this is art? No, this is my first for art. I, I don't, I'm not calling them that. Huh. You you go ahead and nod. I'll, I'll I'll pick up the banner for that. Oh, good. I'll, all right. I'll wave these arts all over the place. Well, oh my lord. <laughs> so we really would love it if you don't send us. No, send don't us send us your, us your <laughs> arts. Send us your fan art, and uh, we are we are going to start giving out uh, these uh, discs. These uh, I've got a Cinema Insomnia Hypno uh, flying disc, and I also have an OSI seventy four flying saucer, which are freebies, which are like. Frisbees only without copyright infringement. They're freebies. Well, how can you do that, but you have a problem with my arts? What's wrong with a freebie? Huh? Well, you're making a pun with the freebie. You're making your own word. I made arts, and you're like, oh, that's gross. Uh, because uh, nobody uh, likes farts. Everybody likes farts. Farts are funny. Uh, to, to quote George Carlin, farts are shit without the... Without the <laughs> what? <laughs> to quote George... Let me say to take two. Okay. To quote George Carlin... Farts are are like shit. <laughs> you mean take three? Take three. Okay. Farts are shit without the mess. <laughs> I guess compared to the alternative, I suppose Sharts. that would be. I suppose that would, that's that's preferable. So we should tell everybody to put their farts in an envelope. Just fart in an envelope no. and send it to where? <laughs> I'm not, no. Uh, OSI seventy four PO box seventy four. Ackland, Pennsylvania, 19310-0074. So that is that is our official... Um, For art mailbox? We can, no. You can fart in the box? Please. Oh, I got to tell you about this. Okay. Pa Paul, you're not going to believe this. I already don't. Okay. Do you remember we've been getting these kind of weird packages from Vincent Spellbinder? Did he fart in one? Did he really fart? I, maybe one? he did. <laughs> I, it was dissipated by the it time I got the package. We had there a bomb was, squad there take was, there care was, of it. Yeah, there was no fart. There was just a turd. Oh, <laughs> uh, Paul. Paul, why Why do we have to go? As you were saying. Way? You know, Paul, put your pants on. <laughs> you know, we're getting too far with this. The good thing is, is at this point, I think my mom's already turned it off. So we're, uh, yeah. we're, we're free this and clear from here on. This was just to your mom. <laughs> we're free and clear from here on. So yeah, just, just to, so just to, I'm, I'm just done, to upset so. her enough to, so yeah. she stops listening. Yeah. Okay, so we've got uh, this package uh, in the mail from Vincent Spellbinder. Vincent Spellbinder, it, it, we haven't edited all of the Mr. Lobo unboxings, but he's sent us a few packages by now. Um, and he also sent some nice things to uh, Carlos Borloff and to Sleazy P. Martini, which were we get handed off to them at Great Philly mm -hmm. Comic Con. Um, he, uh, I, he is a mysterious figure. I don't know if he's a horror host per se, but I, he definitely loves horror hosts and horror stuff and, uh, is a big fan of OSI 74. And he sent us this weird, like shiny silver and pink. It looked, it looked like a, it, it looked like a stripper pouch. If a, if a stripper would have, I guess kangaroos have pouches, so strippers mm -hmm. can have pouches also. 
I guess. Uh, I mean, but, where else do you put the change? But it's this 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 weird uh, purse shaped. Uh, uh, it's a wallet, sort of. And you unzip the top of it, and there were $99.44 in this pouch from Vincent Spellbinder. So we were completely amazed to, to get a generous donation to the channel uh, from a fan. Uh, and we were even more uh, intrigued that this was like a clue to a movie that we might want to do on the channel or on one of our shows. The other thing is that he suggested that Sleazy, uh, Borloff, and I spend this money at a strip club, which we will not do. We can do what Mr. Lobo does. We can bring what we um, had the podcast alive. Where you we can't because I, I spent it all at the laundromat. <laughs> oh. Anyway... <laughs> I wish that weren't true. <laughs> so uh, are, is it time to go to break it's yet? It's time to go to break. Thank the Lord. <laughs> Mr. Lobo. We'll be back to talk about more arts. No, we will not. Uh, Paul will not be back. <laughs> It'll just be Mr. Lobo by himself. Paul's got his own new show yeah, that he's going to be yeah. doing. Tune in next week half for, a show. The, for the, the, the Wakeless Days. Wakeless so. Day half show. Half show. Half time show. Half time half show. I mean, that's a good thing with them only listening to half it. I only have to do a quarter of the work. Uh, I we have to work on the math, perhaps. Sure, we'll see that. <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll we'll try to crunch the numbers, and we'll be back after this. Mm. Well, it's true that I fart, but I wouldn't call myself a farter. I'm a social farter. I really only do it when I'm out with my friends that fart. We hang out. We drink. We dance. Just have some fun being together. Farting. Sometimes I'll use farting as an excuse to meet a guy. Do you want to go outside for a fart? Yeah. We talk. We fart. Just because I fart at parties now and then, it doesn't make me a farter. And we're back. You're not dreaming. This is still the sleepless days with the pantsless producer. Wow. You don't even know the name of your own show. Huh? Oh, sorry. The wakeless days with the pantsless producer. Yeah. Is, uh, is that, is that, am I your co-host on this, on this and, show? And my, you, you'll find my co-host located to my right and or left. <laughs> <laughs> you know, why don't you just take Miss Mittens and the two of you could just do the show together. Leave me out of it. I can't understand her. <laughs> like I, 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 she might as well be speaking Japanese. You really think so? She, uh, <laughs> um. All right. Hold now, on. hold on. What? Oh. <laughs> yep. 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 The Down fans, in flames. The fans have voted. Is that right? The fans has voted. <laughs> The 19, they want they want more art. Nineteen eighty six called, <laughs> and they they want their sound effects. You know, back. I think my grandmother had this had this thing. Did too. she have it in her car? Well, no, she didn't drive, but I think she just had it in the house. Yeah, <laughs> just so she could just shoot smart bombs at people. I love how this is labeled. It says a uh, front machine gun, but there's no rear machine gun. Yeah, uh, Paul is holding a device that would be mounted to your dashboard, <clears throat> and it's got a kind of like spy hunter sort of like a uh, secret. Switches. Ooh, wait, I know so do do that. Do 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 <laughs> Spy Hunter, ladies and gentlemen. Great arcade video game classic. Uh, handsome blonde guy with a gun, right? In a car on the on the on the um, expressway. Um, on the, on the, on on the, the New Jersey well, Parkway. Was, yeah, I was thinking. <laughs> I was thinking of the cabinet of the video game, and then he's so got. So was I. Okay, is that on the cabinet? <laughs> on the video game cabinet. Uh, Spy Hunter. Now, Dixie has this great idea, and we should do it for Cinema Insomnia. But it's the it, it's basically the twenty one gun salute, and it's a whole album, like a, one of those KTEL greatest hits kind of albums, 
only with all the versions of the Peter Gunn theme. Mm. So it's so because it's like you know you could do uh, the Blues Brothers. Dun 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 dun. You could do the actual Peter Gunn theme. You could do the Dragnet Art of Noise where they had the Peter Gunn theme. Um, there's that part of that one Devo song where it goes into the Peter Gunn theme. Uh, it just goes on and on. That's, that's probably probably one of the most covered themes. But of you could only have twenty one of them on the album, and then you'd have to call it quits. Yeah. So, I mean, can you come up with twenty one? You only named like what five? <sighs> I guess I, it's just for a skit. Huh? So I don't know. Right. I, I, I guess. I mean, it's just it's, sure. Uh, five, Paul. <laughs> this is why Dixie doesn't come on the show. Yeah. And shoot down her ideas. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, I used right. to I used to DJ uh-huh. and I had a mixing board and it had these buttons and yeah. planted in and I could never figure out why. Where you like why would them? you need them? Yeah. <laughs> and then half the time, like you would do birthday parties or whatever for like little kids and they'd be up just smashing the buttons yeah. once they figured out they were there. Yeah. I mean, I guess they were there if you wanted to censor the song or something, I guess, but I really had no clue why why a mixing board would have those noises. Yeah, that is weird. I don't I'm trying to No, think you're gonna of, take it away from oh, me if I hand it to you and then I'll never get it back. I'm trying to think of like yeah, I'm trying to think of like and it's grandma's birthday today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know why like, she's falling and she can't get up. <laughs> I don't know like what uh what where the where it what time a DJ would need these kind of sounds? It was four of them. I can't remember what the fourth one was, but they were the exact those those exact noises. Oh, probably a, yeah. a fart noise for yeah, the last probably. one, right? Well, I think that was me. I just put the uh, mic up. Uh, yeah, more. yeah. Well, remind me not to or somebody, invite you to DJ. Or somebody drew something, and then I just say, hey, "Look, it's a fart." <sighs> no, we're keep, never getting keep, any keep more. Keep sending us no, m- that. We are not. We love any your more. farts. No Send more. your farts here to what address? I'm not even. We're not getting. Me. No, we're done. <laughs> That's okay. So, so when Paul, I get my own, when I get my own podcast, I'm getting my own address. So, Paul, we have. It's been an exciting week. We had, uh, and again, we're we're a little bit behind or in the future. I'm not sure. Uh, Several weeks in the future, I guess. Sure, maybe, maybe. Um, but this, at the time of this recording, we had, we've we had, we got our fan art. We got some people who were saying some very nice things about the podcast, actually, and that Paul and I have a uh, rapport. See, you say I'm unclassy with my farts, and you're belching on the on camera. You're not wearing a uh, suit for a change. We got to we got to do this image where where Lobo decided he's going to hey, I'm going to surprise Paul by dressing like him. It's National Paul Day. Yeah. Everyone is dressing yeah. like you today, Paul. We it's just either, forgot to tell you. It's either that or you're like you're going for Magnum PI. I do have a Hawaiian <laughs> shirt on, but it's in the OSI colors. So this is so this that's is, forgivable. Well, is, I'm still kind of in uniform. I'm not sure why you wore the Hawaiian you know Hawaiian shirt. You don't wear a tie. Why'd you wear the tie? Well, you know, I don't. I don't like to show my chest hair to people. I don't like to show my taco <laughs> meat to people. She tuck it in and look like make it look like an ass. We have a we have a friend uh, who who calls his chest hair taco <laughs> meat, and this is the most disgusting thing I've ever heard in my life. I want to gag every time I hear it. Oh, I'm gonna go upstairs shave my taco meat. It's like, oh. God. Are you sure he's talking about his I chest? hope he's talking about it. I hope my mom's not listening. I hope he's talking about his chest hair. <laughs> oh, my God. You what do you call you- your chest hair? Put it in the comments below. <laughs> just dawned on you now that he wasn't talking about his chest at all? <laughs> no, no, no. He was talking. Yeah, it is his chest hair. But it's regardless, it's disgusting. And um, it paints... So the re- the reviews were coming in, you were saying. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, reviews are coming in. Paul and I have a good uh, rapport. Uh, and, and the new episode, we have, we, is at the time of this broadcast, we've podcast or broadcast, uh, whatever you prefer. Oddcast. We, or podcast. We, we, like we, 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 we got we our always, own branding. We are, our own branding, our own wording is podcast. Podcast. For arts. Yeah. yeah see? It's brilliant. It's, it's so good. It's so good that yeah. nobody. Nobody listens. <laughs> Nobody wants and, that. And only your with, mom downloads half an li- episode. Half an episode. Um, so what are we talking about? We're talking about you were this talking week. about the time that this episode came out was, and then you never finished. Okay, and there's we've had, so it's, we've had some good reaction to the podcast mm-hmm. this week, and we have a good reaction to our new episodes that, of Cinema Insomnia. Dun, 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 dun. 
I have. That have I, aired. I, I, I have debuted as a director on Cinema and That's right. You, you, I have. I have. Although two, I think you, I have. Hmm? I have two good news. What's two? Two good newses. Two good news. Oh, I mean the, yeah, the, the arts. The, no, well. Farts is just brilliant. Yeah, uh, the, the 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 most downloaded podcast. Yeah, and I'm I said in my a director st- my my directorial debut. Yeah, Paul got a director credit for the very premiere episode. Premier. We, we went on the we went on Paul the strength of Paul's direction for our our first episode, um, and uh, after com- trying to shoot a premiere episode and totally failing on our own, we pulled an episode that Paul had directed to be our premiere episode. And it was the right choice because it's a damn fine episode and we're getting a lot of good reaction from it. So kudos to Paul. Yay. Yay, Paul. Um, I mean, I know I, I, I've said it on, like when I was posting on post social media, I was saying uh, debut episode or whatever. There was my debut episode. I think you were about to say that technically the vampire special would be the debut. Oh, yeah. But I think this is the more, because that was more of a special. A this special. Is, this, this is a proper. Is a, this is a proper episode. So. But Paul, yeah, Paul did direct the, the vampire special, um, which is a great episode. And then I guess we've done specials because like I, because I kind of consider the trauma tour a cinema insomnia yeah. episode of sorts, but it's a, a crossover also. It's kind of like when Batman yeah. crossed the over Jetsons, with Scooby-Doo. The Jetsons and the Flintstones yeah. I would use as yeah. a better example, perhaps. But uh, I think I think but Jetsons that, nor neither Jetsons nor Flintstones what? have Batman. I guess it's not a better example if Batman can't be included somehow. Um, but this is why I have the most distance. <sighs> yeah, yeah. I, I also follow your lead more. You Paul. see this badge I made for myself? I printed it out yesterday. It just says <laughs> it says most listened to episode ever. Yeah, so it's made out of baloney. It's made out of baloney. And I <laughs> took a couple bites out, so it looks like a star. <laughs> Uh, so, um, uh, so the premiere episode was the film, uh, the red house. Yes. Which Um, is not really a typical cinema insomnia go-to. Not currently. I think that we would have done a movie like that in our first season, you Mm. know, because we were on, uh, we were the overnight movie on, uh, ABC in Sacramento. And, uh, and for those Sacramento, Sacramento, um, and for those episodes, we did not, uh, we didn't really get to choose the movies. We just had to do whatever the overnight movie was, and we wrapped around it. And they did a lot of these sort of melodramas and uh, noir films and detective stories and mysteries, and not always the pillars, which I would say sci fi and horror are probably the two pillars, cult movies being maybe the third leg of a table. Um, uh, Wouldn't that be a stool? Uh, it may be a stool. It always, it's always poop stuff with you. I, you took it there. I didn't even butt stuff even... up and down every time. <laughs> All right. So, um, and then what? Then Aaron's debut. And then Aaron's debut came episode out came out, uh, which was the Attack of the Giant Leeches, or rather, or rather, we should say Bloodsuckers of the Atomic Swamp, which is a much more exciting AKA for that film, starring the Big Spoon. Uh, at Paul <laughs> is uh, uh, is credited as the big spoon is it in that episode credited? in the in the episode. Is it? Yeah, yeah. It's, okay. it, you are credited the, <laughs> the big spoon. I have Paul to apologize because you know before I had to go shoot this weekend, I only got halfway yeah. through the episode, so I didn't get to watch. Yeah, all the, way the, to end, the end. Your so. credit is big spoon. So, which is funny because Paul always wanted to be the big spoon. <laughs> and, and that's really actually a, a, it's a podcast reference, really. It's a podcast really. reference, yeah. So, it's, it's, it's well, interesting it's, it, that it's it goes sort beyond of come the podcast. to fruition. It goes right? beyond the podcast because it was always the joke of, you know, if anybody comes over, I mean, just remember Paul's always the big spoon. And then it got pushed whenever Aaron would come out. I was like, well, just tell Aaron that Paul's the big spoon. And it just became, that's, it's, that's it's right. like the pantsless producer thing. It just becomes its it, own It just thing. became its own thing. Yes. So, so yeah, the joke was, is that, is that we had both Paul and Aaron sleeping over while we were making all the new episodes and, um, or the new episodes that we got to work on in that first run. And, uh, so yeah, Paul was joking that he, he got to be the big spoon and, <laughs> When we were filming um, Attack of the Giant Leeches, a.k.a. Bloodsuckers of the Atomic Swamp, um, one of the leeches, and this is a spoiler, so if you haven't seen the episode yet, this is a time to cover right. your ears I'm or take leave my headphones the room. Off. Hold on. <laughs> All right, go ahead. I have my headphones uh, Okay, off. good, good. Paul's not listening. Well, let me tell you what la, happens. La, 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 la. Uh, so so uh, 
Mr. Lobo finds himself in a cave having his blood drained by a giant leech. And so the giant leech is, is, is kind of curled up behind Mr. Lobo. And I have a crazy straw going into my neck. And I have this undulating figure <laughs> behind me while <laughs> I'm closing out the show. Now, we had a 16-year-old intern named Brandon. Or excuse me, 16. He's not 16. He's, he's, he's a grown man. He's 21 years old. But uh, he, uh, we had a young man over here, a uh, young intern over here, who was tasked with uh, uh, doing the slating the scenes and playing the giant leech and some of the other scenes. He was doing some, I did doing not some of the... feel comfortable asking this young man <laughs> to curl up behind me <laughs> and perform as this leech. I feel honored. So... <laughs> I asked Paul to which do was your this, first mistake which is my first mistake uh and 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 so that's Paul behind me as the giant leech in the last scene and behind the scenes is like before you get get the leech costume on please put on some goddamn <laughs> pants that was exactly that's exactly what happened so Paul who did have some jeans I believe on so, so which is probably as close you know he was dressed like a farm kid but he at least had <laughs> Jeans on, no denim. shirt. <laughs> <laughs> no, just a kerchief and no shirt. And uh, but then he had a plastic bag over his whole body with with uh, cups all over it, suction cups all over it. Yeah. So um, so this is this was that's something to look forward to is Paul as the big spoon. We I mean, ended up crediting that that character. As I the mean, behind spoon. the scenes info is whenever. The uh, the leech is walking. That's Brandon. Yeah, Brandon's in the costume costume. Yes. Whenever the leech is a puppet, yes, is when I'm kind of operating. So so Paul is the Rico Browning, <laughs> and 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 Brandon is the Ben Chapman. So those of you who are fans of Creature from the Black Lagoon know what that means. Rico Browning was the swimming creature, and um and 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 um Ben Chapman was the walking creature. So if you watch the film Creature from the Black Lagoon, you can distinctly see two different people playing playing the character. Um but we have two leeches and uh That's so not a nice thing to say. Like, <laughs> like seriously. Yeah, it kind of sucks. Yeah, it does. <laughs> As leeches might do. All right. Well, we're on we're going actually we're yeah, we're ending this segment on that joke. I'm sorry. But we will be back with more Sleepless nights of insomnia. And we will be back with more wakeless days of whatever I said before. Did you know, Paul's for arts. For arts. <laughs> if you love great cult television shows and programs like Cinema Insomnia. Cinema Insomnia. With Mr. Lobo. Mr. Lobo. Church of the Subgenius. Subgenius. Creature Features. Creature Features. Troma. Troma. Sleazy P. Martini of Guar. Monster Madhouse. Madhouse. Josh Hadley's 1201 Beyond. Beyond. Foamy Squirrel. Squirrel. And? Oh, 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 Besto TV. Besto TV. That's right. Besto TV even. Although I think we might be cutting Besto TV. Oh. Uh, visit our website, osi74.com, and add Outer Space International. Outer Space International. It's something you need in your life. It's a, it's a brand new channel that you can add to your Roku. OS, Roku. that's right. Go to osi74.com. .com. Hey, Mr. Lobo. I, oh, Paul, what's up? I have a question here about this 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 memo that I got from you. It says that Besto TV now needs a commercial. Oh, whoever wrote that should get fired. I think. I'm not quite sure what to put into said commercial uh for besto tv i mean you know you just talk about your channel like creative continuity and its sister show bonus content right all the convention culture and the interviews with celebrities and all that stuff sure well i guess i could also mention the cosplay montages costumes costumes right uh astonishing cosplay montage set to an epic soundtrack i, I guess there's convention rewind too those are great we've run those on osi 74 so i guess that's all i need so i, I guess all i are you sure because there's i think there's one other show that you produce for that for a besto, I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. With with Mr. Lobo, yeah, what what that we do together, the thing that we do. Remember all those videos we did? Oh, like Mr. Lobo does. Yes, yes, Mr. Lobo does. Of course, that's awesome. I'm going to get right on this. And I'm going to write up the script. Hey, wait, Paul, you forgot to tell him to go to besto.tv. Idiot. 
we're still here and somehow you're still here or maybe it's probably more than halfway through so more than likely you're not still here so i should stop doing this now because well i think we just have to be a good soldier and just i think have, it's just better going. off if i just do half a show it, what you just bow out halfway just through bow out halfway out through like it's and still I just finish it out <laughs> by myself i guess i mean isn't that the point of the podcast though is you have to have two jackasses at least just just so you can just bounce off each other and be amuse yourself i guess and just talk i mean that's the the, the number one fan or who the number one person we have to entertain is each other right i i guess so right and then the what person listening is just kind of are they a fly on the wall? Or are they pretending they're hanging out with us and we're all having this are like the fly on the bunch fart? of dudes being guys having this conversation, right? Right. They can't be a fly on the fart. Oh, Paul, please. They're better than a fly <laughs> on the chart. <laughs> Why do we have to keep talking? We've been talking about poop for, for an hour now, Paul. I've been talking about poop for longer than an hour. It's just that we've been recording it. <laughs> your, your whole life has been building up to this. It was a big build up and it's going to be a big blowout. <laughs> oh, oh my Lord. Hey, you know what is a good idea that maybe sometime in the future we should record a, a podcast that'd be strictly about the, uh, the cinema insomnia episodes. That'd be kind of a supplement. What do you think about that? I think that's a great idea. And then they would have something that would like, could watch like almost sort they of, they would get their behind the scenes would it information. Be, would it be kind of like a, almost like a, um, audio commentary sort of kind of sort, sort of. of. Yeah. But not not in rec- real time. No, because if we yeah. do if we do it in an hour, if we do an hour podcast, it yeah. would just yeah, it wouldn't be the full. Well, I think it's better anyway because it's more consolidated. I don't. And I think that sometimes those things get too drawn out. Right. It's like I'd rather just be able to. It would be more useful to have all the information about the show in a shorter amount of time than just watching the whole show. I mean, we could do it like like what what is it the Goonies or whatever. Where they all got pissed off with each other by the end of the thing, and they all walked out. <laughs> so is that what <laughs> is that what happened in the in, I think in the, the, the audio the, commentary? The audio, audio commentary for the Goonies. I think they all got kind of pissed off at each other and I, kind of just up and left. As a cult, I think there's another mm-hmm. movie too, but I can't recall the other movie where the people as just a kind of left. Cult movie person, I have to make a kind of a probably upsetting to some of my fans' confession. I am not a huge fan of the Goonies. I think that. This is why I need to have my own podcast. Yeah. I'm just going to so call you can it. Just, uh, you can not talk about the Goonies mm-hmm. on your well, first fuck episode. Fuck it. I'm going to talk about the Goonies. Talk about I'm going to talk about the Goonies. You can talk about... Monster Squad. Yeah. I would rather talk about Monster Squad. I think... It, you, know, there's a, like, you know, if Quentin Tarantino were here, he'd probably say there's two kinds of people. You're either a Monster Squad person or a Goonies person. And I'm a Monster Squad person. Blasphemy. Sorry. Blasphemy. It just didn't hit me at the right time. I think you're, you're a little younger than I am, Paul. Just so, a little. So I think that, that it may have hit you right between the eyes. Did you see it in the theater? Goonies? Uh, I believe so. Oh, okay. See, I didn't see it in the theater. See, I don't think, and I don't think I saw Monster Squad in the theater. Mm-hmm. I saw Monster Squad when it came out to VHS. Later, right? So, oh, no, maybe I did see it in the theater. Monster Squad? Yeah, because I'm, mm-hmm. you know, the, the famous mm-hmm. Wolfman's got no. Wolfman's got no. And I think I kind everyone, of remember being in that. Everyone said that. But and I'm not Wolfman's sure if I remember that from the theater. You or couldn't, from VHS. you couldn't go anywhere, you know, grocery store. They're ringing you out, you know. Have a nice day. Wolfman's got nards. Yeah. Everywhere. See, you talk about Wolfman's got Mail nards, man. and then I can sit over here and I can talk about my one-eyed Willie. Oh, Paul. And we're both referencing our movies. I'm so glad that your mom has not stopped this <laughs> thing. I am talking about the pirate. <laughs> <laughs> you know what we should do? I do a solo podcast on the Goonies. You do a solo podcast on Monster Squad, and uh-huh. we record it so that when if you play it together, it sounds like we're talking to each other. Oh, that's but, interesting. But that's it's interesting. not. Yeah. Or I could, we could actually talk about both at the same time, and I could just strip the channels and make them both their own separate podcasts. Wow, but that sounds like too much work. That sounds like a lot of work for nothing. Yeah, yeah. Because I don't scratch know. that. That's a bad idea. Yeah. Is there something we can compromise on, Paul? Is there a third? bunch of kids having a spooky adventure movie that we can agree on that we can come together on where we both feel like that we enjoyed that film equally pretty woman oh paul all right steel magnolias no <laughs> look at this you're upsetting the cat you're upsetting <laughs> garbage upset cat, cat with this i think this is a, this is her premiere talk this. it up talk it up can you hear that you uh-huh. think she can hear oh that? i can hear it Yep. This is Garbage Cat, everyone. Garbage Cat hates Steel Magnolias <laughs> and Pretty Woman. is very upset. Your hair is standing on end. Um, uh, Breakfast Club? I 
don't like Breakfast Club that much. Not even I don't even recall. I can't name anything from Breakfast Club because I don't even think I've ever saw it all the way through. I like it. I just a lot of people they saw it and it changed their lives. I was not one of those people because no. my high school experience was not that. No. Like when I watched that movie, I'm like, what planet are these people from? This is not my experience. Now Ferris Bueller, on the other hand, no. God damn it. No. I was uh, Parker Lewis. I don't even know you. Parker Lewis can't lose. <laughs> Parker Lewis, man. Parker Lewis can, can it would just destroy Ferris Bueller. If there was a battle, between, uh, if there was like a, a breakdance battle, the breakdance battle, uh, or whatever <laughs> 80s it. appropriate battle between Parker Lewis and uh, um, Ferris Bueller, Parker Electric Lewis Bueller. would win. Boogaloo. Yeah. I like, uh, did you ever see Parker Lewis Can't Lose? Can't say Great show. Synchronized swatches. <laughs> there was all that. You could imagine all their wrists coming into the shot at the same time. Sure. It was a TV show. Fox. Fox TV show. Late 80s. Like The Simpsons? Married with Children. Married I love with Married with Children. Go. Yeah, sure. There. Married with Children. There. That's something that we both appreciate. But that, but that has nothing to do with the Goonies or Monster Squad. <laughs> Did the rest of the crap that we named? <laughs> I think we were just naming shit that we didn't like <laughs> each other. Well, not so much not like, just not really yes. familiar with. Um, uh, you don't like Buckaroo Bonsai, which I can't believe. I just can't, never got into it. Never oh, really. I, I cannot believe. To and it's, okay. it's weird because we, it's like we, we both like. Toxic Avenger. Well, I was going to say we both what? like uh, um, Robocop. Kentucky Fried Movie. We both love Kentucky Fried Movie. Right. Yeah. So it's kind of weird that I wouldn't get into Buckeye Bonsai because yeah. of its same, similar mindset. It's, uh, yeah, More, it's, really it's not really ta- something to be taken seriously. No, not to be taken seriously. Buckaroo Bonsai is very offbeat. Um, what were we talking about and why? We were talking about uh, um, doing commentary for Resident Evil Insomnia, and I think it just got derailed somewhere around there. No one wants to hear our commentary. You wanted to talk about Wolfman's bar- balls and no. nards. <laughs> <laughs> and I wanted to talk about One-Eyed Willie. And- Wolfman's mom is upset because we're talking about the Wolfman's balls on the podcast. Um, Mrs. Willie doesn't do. Oh, no. <laughs> Mrs. Willie. Oh uh, boy! You think Richard Donner like knew damn well oh, when writing the script? Oh, yeah. that, what I Willie? Oh yeah! I wasn't even much much older until I even really understood that reference. <laughs> oh yeah, I, Richard Donner's funny man. I mean, I think he's got a really good sense of humor, and I think that, I mean, to be honest, the Superman movies have great humor to them. Why else would you have Gene Hackman be Lex Luthor? if you didn't just want to just jam pack it with excellent jokes. And there's some excellent jokes in Superman. Superman is, is got a lot of humor, which I think comic book movies should have a, a degree of humor. I know that comic book fans are serious, but I kind of feel like there's a tradition there of, with comics where you have to kind of be a little self-aware. Like Deadpool. Like that's a lot self-aware. <laughs> that is like, right, like self-aware Deadpool. to a fault. <laughs> you know, that's like that's like so that's self-loathing. Almost. Did you not see Deadpool two? I did not. So we cannot talk about. So you not. We legitimately no, can't not talk okay. about it. So you, so when I, I was using it as code, as you did see it, so no, you didn't see it. I did not. Okay, I actually. Did not. <laughs> <laughs> you lost me there because oh, I'm like, wait, we're I was so saying it tired, to be- <laughs> everyone. We're so tired. We're and sorry. we've got six more of these to record. Oh my god! And some raps. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> um, now that we just alienated a whole <laughs> set of our fandom, yeah, <laughs> they are not going to be sending us any of their f- arts. No, 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 they're not. Um, we don't deserve it. So, um, we deserve everybody's arts. So, that's something. Let us know, I guess, in the comments if you want us to uh, not talk about Cinema Insomnia in more detail, specific episodes, actually right? Specific, yeah. Actually, talk about Cinema Insomnia yeah. in detail, behind the scenes. Uh, and, and, uh, cause I mean, I think especially with Red House. Yeah. Especially with Red House, because I feel like that was an experimental episode. There's a lot in, to talk about. And I, I know, like, Red House, I know in, in both of Aaron's episodes as well, yes. you know, because of being there, being a part of that, I think, you know. I mean, it'd be great is, is maybe hold off for Aaron's episodes until he's here in July and 
That's true. We can all talk about. We can all talk uh, about. All talk about working on it together, and we'll be working on more together. Hopefully, I know Paul's been very busy with with uh, conventions. Just every weekend, conventions. Speaking of conventions, you're going to hear this first. Yeah, the podcast list is going to be here here first. Yeah. I will officially be doing NYCC at the end of this year. Oh, tickets went on sale this morning. Oh. I had you know I was I was shooting, so I couldn't be in the virtual yeah. queue. I had some friends that. Uh, Stepped up and you know we want you there. Oh, so they they helped get oh. tickets. So it wow. is official. If any of you listeners are at New York Comic Con and you want to de- personally deliver your arts, mm. I will be there. Well, Paul will be there to air your arts. <laughs> mm-hmm. And uh, the other item that that, that 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 spiked my memory is that uh, uh, from the Red House mm-hmm. actually inspired me to sit my ass down in front of the computer and write some shit. Yes, Paul is... So there's actually uh, going to be a written episode or two. Yeah, and, and so Paul's been writing uh, Cinnamon Sally material, and it's good stuff, so hopefully we'll get to do... Kind of ambitious, I think, but we'll see if we Not can get, terribly it, get it but. in the docket, get it happening. Yeah. Um, you know, hopefully as things go forward and as we have more and more Patreon support, because we need your support. We're making these new episodes, but to be honest, we're making them on fumes. And where can they go to support? Patreon.com slash Cinema Insomnia. Uh, read all the stuff. There's lots of stuff to watch. You can watch the episodes there. Um, a lot of the things are public, so that you even before you join on the Patreon page, there are things to look at and read and, and see and experience. How about if we do if we do the, the behind-the-scenes stuff for the... For the Cinema Insomnia, maybe we just drop them on Patreon first. Patreon first, and just leave them there until we're ready to. Yeah, that's a good to idea. Throw them out into the, that's a good idea. We definitely given. Uh, we give a lot of a lot of things. Are sh- all the episodes have been seen on the um, Patreon first before the the general public, and um, you know I think that it's it, we can make them more. Uh, just better and better with 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 more support and uh i think that we've got a great start and if you are enjoying the the episodes so far you know by all means come on board join us be part of it because uh you know we want this season to be your favorite season so uh we're gonna go is this are we wrapping up for good or we no, got, we one, got more? one more one more one break. more we've got one more 15 uh, minutes of this shit. Oh my gosh. Art. So <laughs> we're going to take one more break. We're going to be back with uh, the f- conclusion, the merciful conclusion to the sleepless nights of insomnia. And we're going to solve the ultimate battle of which is better, Monster Squad or Goonies? Or Parker Lewis. summer from Paramount Pictures. The adventure begins in your own backyard. We're back with the, uh, as promised, merciful, very merciful conclusion to, we decided to give you a break, actually, give you a a treat, actually. And hope it doesn't end like a... Our treat, our special treat for those of you who are still with us, which is probably what fifty percent are probably dropped off huh? by now. Well, right? if I, if it was just me alone. <laughs> <laughs> but if you're still listening, we have a special treat. Not only has is Garbage Cat on the show tonight, <laughs> but the lovely, Miss talented, uh, funny, hotty toddy, and brainy too, uh, Dixie Delamorto Lopo. 
And she's going to ultimately solve this question. Which is better, Monster Squad or Goonies? Monster Squad. That's unfair because it's like, you know, I saw you paying her in the kitchen. <laughs> no, no. I, I think that that's, a, that's just, just right. She's no. just speaking truth. I'm, I'm wearing my Stephen King rules shirt it's right unfair. now as we speak. Uh, I want to recount. Just to prove a point. Yes. Yeah, I think I think there were some hanging chads I know that, on that. I, Dixie's such a Monster Squad fan. Yeah, I definitely is stacked because Dixie's such a Monster Squad fan that the other night she was contemplating making her own Stephen King rules t-shirt that was more accurate because all of the letters would be individually ironed on. Yeah. That's how crazy. The hard part is finding the yellow iron on letters in 2018. Yeah, that is t- you have to get your time machine yeah. first. Uh, that, that that was the thing that that Rob was saying about the Terminator movies. It's like the whole world's destroyed, but somehow they make a time machine. <laughs> somehow they had enough resources to build the time machine. <laughs> all right, all right. So Paul, so Paul, uh, I'm sorry about the Goonies. It's just it's I, just gonna have to be Monster Squad. I don't think so. No, I don't think, I don't think this is over. I think I it's think, over. I don't think this is over. Wolfman's got nards. It's, it's over. <laughs> Uh, One-eyed Willie all the way. Oh, no. Oh, no. All right. Sloth love chunk. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I mean, Sloth versus Frankenstein. Frankenstein will win every time. Now a mo- major motion picture. <laughs> <laughs> we Dixie and I found a Frankenstein novelization. It looked it's like not it's a novelization. It's no, a novel. It's a novel. I mean, famously a novel, right? A Frankenstein versus Sloth? No, no. <laughs> Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. We, a paperback edition of of. The story I think Frankenstein. It's from like 1997. And it's from the 90s. And then there's like a little starburst in the corner that says, Now a major motion picture. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, what you've all been waiting for. I mean, I guess they about could be time. talking about the uh, the one with, um, what's his with, face? From with Taxi Driver. Uh, yeah, the one that came out in the 90s. Oh, yeah. with, uh, oh, the one with, with Robert De Niro? Yeah. But like it was a children's edition, so I really don't think that... Yeah, that so there was... were, they were touting a 1930s movie on this 90s children's book, uh, children's edition of, of a classic. Uh, it, it just was funny. It just was funny. Um, but um, Dixie, we were talking about... Are you trying to get Garbage Cat's She's attention? She's real loud. Yeah, we were talking about arts. Arts? Farts. Arts. Yeah. Oh. Good abbreviation for fan art. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's real clever, guys. See? See? Classy. I, I, I want her over. I, think <laughs> I want her over on <laughs> my she side might be being I might forgive her on this. She mm. might be being sarcastic. Play. No, yeah. I, I don't care. It's I'll hard take it to as tell win. with me. So, so Dixie, <laughs> we, were th- we, we were racking our brains. We couldn't come up with it. But, you know... Paul is kind of on the Goonie side. Uh-huh. I'm on the Monster Squad s- yeah. side. Is there one that's like in the middle where like Paul and I would both enjoy equally kind of of the same genre? What about like Night of the Creeps? Night of the Creeps? I mean, they're not children. So. They're not really children, though. Have you ever seen that movie? But it's fun. It's, oh, it's fun like movie. those two. Uh, what about Return of the Living Dead Part 2? Part 2? Yeah. Part 2 has children has or children. child. Actually, I don't think I saw that one. How about the Toby Hooper Invaders from Mars? I don't think no. I've seen that one. Paul, like, uh, do you have enough fingers for all the movies you've seen? <laughs> I, I've got these two. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's clever. Does that mean wrap it up? <laughs> no. no okay. That's the other one. Oh, all right. Uh, so, um, so. Uh, <laughs> Paul, we were talking about now. Actually, we we are enjoying stealing you know Paul's uh, movie collection. Yeah, his, actually, yeah. His voodoo collection. All, a lot of superheroes. Yeah. And a, and a fair peppering of horror movies. So I can't really yeah. talk shit yeah. too much. Well, and Paul likes the Toxic Avenger. That's nice. Mm-hmm. You're there's not a good. There's a good child. Head, I know. Head how about having a good in good that? in between thing would just be Frankenhooker. That has nothing to do with now children. a major major motion <laughs> now picture. a major motion picture. Yeah, in 1980. <laughs> Are there children or in Frankenhooker? I, I don't think. Don't. So. I don't recall <laughs> that either. Considering so. the premise of it, I don't think yeah. so. All those kids um. have super crack. <laughs> and that's just the heavy set ones. Uh, wow, Paul. And there went the rest of our audience. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, wrong one. <laughs> Wrong one. 
Oh. The cat's really upset by all yeah, this. Yeah, the cat does not like any of these noises. <laughs> what the Especially hell? the talking. Um, What's the one with Harry, uh, Howie Mandel and uh, Harry and the Hendersons? Oh, I like that one. That's uh, 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 Harry and the my, Hendersons. It's not. It's the monster. Little monsters. Little monsters. Little monsters. See, now I haven't haven't seen that. You one. have. We watched part of it together. Yeah, I don't it's think shitty. You might not. Have seen <laughs> it. Oh, okay. It's pretty <laughs> shitty. But you know what? When I was a kid, I watched that movie, and like, there's the normal kid that has the monster inside of him, and he kind of has like part of the monster sticking out the back of his head, and that terrified me. As a kid, like the idea that like someone who looks totally normal would just have this grotesque thing inside of them. What is not not the scene where where uh, Howie's monster drinks all the apple juice and then pisses in the bottle? Oh, I remember that. That's probably that's, upsetting. Also, that's, that's probably more, upset. I, I blocked that. More her, I blocked that out of my mind. I think that's more of a dick move. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's not really a scary monster. He's a asshole monster. How come we can't think of more horror movies with kids in them? Oh, God, I mean, Gremlins tons. doesn't have really kids in it. They're not really kids in that. No, yeah, they're, they're more. They're young adults. All right. Um, horror movies with children. Although, although it still has it still has Corey Feldman. Oh, oh, uh, what about, well, and, 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 and what is that? Uh, Lost Boys, they're They're young. pretty teens, they're young. They're I young. mean, there's but the that, teenagers and the I wouldn't call myself younger. a huge Lost Boys fan. I appreciate God Lost Boys. It. Do you know that Richard Donner originally was supposed to direct that? Direct that mm-hmm. And uh, it was supposed to be more about, actually, the, uh, the, uh, the Lost Boys from Peter Pan. Oh, okay. Being Interesting. vampires and stuff Interesting. like that. Interesting. Did you, now you, I mean, you like The Lost Boys? I like The Lost Boys. Yeah, I like yeah. it. And I like it a lot more now. Like when I was a teenager, I was thinking, oh, that's a girls movie. Like, you know, like all those guys that like have all the venom for Twilight. Mm. I was like, oh, they bleed sparkly and there's, you know, but that's a girls movie. I mean, that was, my, I was that. If you were that girl? I was that girl. <laughs> <laughs> Girlfriend, let me tell you. And there went the rest um, of the audience. Yeah. <laughs> uh uh-uh. uh but all girl, these yeah. vampires. So. <laughs> yeah, so it's interesting because, like, you know, I was a classic horror fan, and then when this, when when Lost Boys came out, I was thinking this is a girls' movie, and uh, and I don't I don't like their style. But it's looking at it now as a someone who was a teenager in the eighties, growing up, not boy, counting the Lost Tribe. That movie is wonderful. It's so funny, and there's so much to it, and there's it's campy. It, so campy, and there's so much '80s flavor on it. So I, I guess I'm a convert for the Lost Boys mm. now, as an adult. As a kid, I thought it was trash. As an adult, I think it's actually a pretty damn fun movie. <laughs> as a kid, you thought it was trash, and as an adult, you thought it was just fun trash. Yeah, it's good trash. Is that what you're saying good yeah, trash. Yeah, absolutely. Good absolutely. For art. My favorite uh, part of uh, that movie no more fart. is the Rob Lowe poster in Corey Haim's bedroom. Why is that your favorite part of that it's movie? It's just like the weird. It's so off. It's so you like think, I would raise an eyebrow with mom. You'd think, yeah, in the hiding 80s. in the closet. Mm-hmm. Like, why would you? Keep, first of all, I who think, hangs a poster on the inside of the I closet? Think all horror, teen horror films are like gay allegories, aren't they? De- pretty much, definitely. Like, I mean, Teenage Werewolf, yeah, and uh, Nightmare on Elm Street Two. That's Nightmare on Elm the Street one too. Yeah. Which I talked to the guy who directed that mm-hmm. this week. He uh, he congratulated me as Alan Smithy for all of my film work. Nice. So I had to, uh, yeah. So he he liked the the fact that I used the name Alan Smithy. But it was funny that the guy who directed that movie reached out this mm. week and and uh, called out my fake name on Facebook. He has a great pedigree, <laughs> but I think I was the most impressed that he and you're was like, the Nightmare on Elm yeah. Street. And part you're like you're, you're guy. Nightmare on Elm Street Part Two director. And he's like, yeah. I'm like, can you delete that comment, please? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Actually, I don't dislike Nightmare on Elm Street too. I mean, I, I know it's the black sheep and stuff, but it is not. It's my favorite. Bad. I like it, and and to be honest, I mean, I've done some shows with um, Peaches Christ and and other horror hosts, and in the gay community, that's the best Friday the, the uh, Friday Thirteenth. It's the <laughs> best Friday the Thirteenth movie. Best Nightmare one they ever on made. Elm Street Part Two. <laughs> this is Jason's glove, right? Uh, yeah. Oh. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, this is Jason's chainsaw. Yeah. <laughs> from Freddy. Uh, for Friday the th- uh, Oh, nightmares. Jesus. Let's just nightmare wrap it up. Freddy's. <laughs> um, Freddy's Nightmares? Yeah. The TV series? Yeah. <laughs> also brilliant. Yeah. I don't I mean, recall much of that. It gave me nightmares when yeah. I was a kid. Um, See, I remember that, you know, and if my mom's listening now, here's, here's a tidbit. Okay. Was that I remember going to my buddy's house and he had rented 
uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, and that was the first time I saw it was at my friend's house. And I wasn't allowed to watch horror movies. Oh, so I watched that. You're going to be in trouble. Yeah, I'm going to mm-hmm. be in trouble. I'm going to get grounded when, mm-hmm. I, when I get home. Mm-hmm. So maybe I should bleep this part out. You might want to edit this part out. But uh, um, which is the one where the girl ends up as, uh, turning into the cockroach? And she's in the, Is that three or four? Naked that's Lunch. Not, no, that's not three. Yeah. That's four. Cronenberg, for sure. <laughs> Uh, uh, I'm not that, sure. Is I that, think that's four. That it's not three Warriors? because three is Dream Wars. It's four. Four because that's when it starts getting really weird and wacky. See the four or five. I mean, it's that gets wacky fast. Yeah, <laughs> they're but they're I, I, I only bring that one up. Go. I only bring that one up because that's the first one that I saw in the theater. Yeah, yeah. And I remember remember specifically that scene in the in the time loop scene where she just keeps coming back to the car over and over and over. There again. was a uh, there was such a mystique with those movies. You know, it's interesting how hard they hit. And um, and how strong the character of Freddy Krueger, who is essentially a child molester, I'm I don't think he's essentially a child he, molester. I think he straight is a child is molester. Is a child molester. Uh, with, he was. Uh, I think he was in the first draft, figures. draft, and then they just cut it out for. Um, and then, um, well, I mean, they kill him for reasons, and it's ambiguous. The parents, but, the parents but kill. It's, yeah. it's the, heavily I, the implied. The parents kill the quirky ice cream man. I think for it was, yeah, yeah, exactly. I think, <laughs> in the, I think in the first one, it was it was specifically told yeah, that yeah. way, and then he he pulled it, and then um, later on, I, later on in the series, I think they hit on it more so. So you're 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 recalling it, but I think you're recalling it through the scope through of the through it. the that scope of, of of the other films. Yeah. Um. But but uh, Freddy Krueger. Again, who who is essentially at, le- at the very least a child murderer, uh, it, it was extremely popular with children mm-hmm. somehow <laughs> as a character. I have the doll baby mm-hmm. that talks. Yeah, you have. It's weird because you've got Beetlejuice, who's another pedophile. Well, I mean, Lydia is kind of. I mean, we don't know how old. We Lydia don't know how old, thing. but she's probably she's in high school. Yeah, I guess so. She could be eighteen. And her stepdad or dad is actually a pedophile. Yes. So. That wow. makes things rough. Jeez, man, Holly, bad. Shame on you, Hollywood. Oh, and then that Jeffrey Jones is that what that yeah, guy's name? is? I think so. Well, I don't, let's not air everyone's dirty laundry on this show. Everybody already knows that. I, but the, it was funny because you used to have the doll babies up, and you had you had the Freddy one, and then you had the Beetlejuice one, and then Kiwi you had Herman. the Martin Short one, which is funny. Oh yeah, because he played a pedophile in on Law and Order. Law and Order. He actually plays a psychic. A psychic who, pedophile? Well, he's no, he plays a psychic who keeps predicting murders. Oh, okay. Or I think it's murders or rapes. Uh-huh. It could be, but he ends up being the one. I do, see. He predicts them because he's doing. It's a good. And episode, then you spoilers. have you, and then and then and then Pee Wee Herman is not a pedophile. No, but he's oft he but often, a, often gets that rap. Accused gets that rap because also, of there was because that he was a just, it, it, the, it seemed like you had porn. like your your museum of pedophile dolls. Yeah. But only because that was like the the range of 80s pull string dolls. Yeah. There was an so, agenda. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> the 80s pedophile agenda. <laughs> that's why Goonies and Monster Squad got made. <laughs> Oh boy! Oh boy! We've mean, now we've now we've upset all our fans. I think now we've finally isolated everybody. Everybody, there's no we've got no friends left on the internet. I, I always kind of thought that they like made Corey Haim over sexualized in the Lost Boys. They show him in the bathtub and stuff, and he's got the sexy Rob Lowe poster. Yeah, I feel like there's just a little weirdness there. Yeah, again Hollywood, you know. Um, but that, uh, yeah, I mean, I feel like I don't know. I think one of these days, all the stuff that happened in the 80s is finally going to come to light, and there probably won't be a film director mm. in the world that we would want to leave our children with. <laughs> I already kind of feel that way. I yeah. feel like there's already... No- Namblin Entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. So uh, uh, another tidbit that I know uh, of, of Lost Boys, and you may know this, uh-huh. or the people out there listening okay. may know this, or if not, it's a nice new piece of trivia that you will now yeah. know. It was about the, the sclera lenses that they wore were very painful and whatnot. Oh. And the scene in the end... Uh, this is the contacts? The contacts that uh-huh. the vampires wear. Yeah. yeah they're sclera, and at that time they were glass. Sclera. I've never heard that. Sclera the lenses the are, are they cover they cover the whole eye. They don't just cover oh, the, okay. the, 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 the people. They cover the whole eye. Okay. And of course they were made out of glass, and they were extremely painful at that time. Yeah. And from a full day of shooting plus extra hours, that yeah. last scene where uh, Kiefer Sutherland has the tear rolling down, yeah. 
it, the, my understanding is that it's actually from those lenses. Oh, it wasn't wow. a, a dramatic moment. It was he was in pain. Wow, wow, he was that's in pain for his craft. His, that's his art. horrible. That that I always 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 think that's funny. Where they're like, oh, he's a method actor. It's like, no, 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 that's not acting. You're just no, hurting he's just, yourself. He's just on meth. That is. <laughs> <laughs> um, Dixie and I have been to Santa Cruz many times. On the boardwalk where Lost Boys was filmed. And Dixie has a funny story. You because, mean Santa Carla? Yes, yes. In the movie, it was Santa Carla. And then in real life, it is Santa Cruz. And they've got the, like the caveman guy on the, uh, uh, what is that thing called that hangs the ride? It's, not, it's, uh, uh, it's not really a monorail. No. Um, like a, a ski, ski lift. lift. Yeah, ski lift, only without skis. A beach lift? Just a lift. Um, and they got the carousel. And the carousel and the comic book store, which is not really on the boardwalk per se. That is at, at, uh, Atlantis um, Fantasy World, the comic book store, which is near, which is in that town, but not right there. Um, but Dixie was trying to figure out if it was indeed where they filmed the Lost Boys. I got, I I thought it was, and then someone on Facebook told me it wasn't, and I'm like, well, well, shit. Here if it's I on, am. If it's on Facebook, you know, it's got to be true, right? Yeah, well, it was a trusted friend. I'm not going to name any names. It wasn't the, dir- like, it's wasn't not the director of Nightmare on Elm Street 2, no, was it? No, not... not <laughs> <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't cross our paths yet. But, so I actually pressured Lobo into going and asking somebody in one of the gift shops. Because there, there was vampire stuff everywhere. And I guess when we were there, it was the height of Twilight. So I wasn't sure if it was... You know, because of Twilight that there was vampire stuff everywhere or because this was indeed the place that Lost Boys was filmed. And there's probably like, what, 16-year-old girl? Work on the counter. Yeah, and Lobo walks up and he says, excuse me, you know, can you tell me if, if the reason you have all this vampire stuff is because the Lost Boys was filmed here? And she says, well... I know the Lost Boys was filmed here, but I don't know why there's all this vampire stuff. <laughs> there was like, but wow. you know that Frankenstein was a male major motion yeah. picture. <laughs> I feel like if you just used your cognitive skills, like you could have figured, figured out what she, Lost she Boys. She probably was about. didn't know what the film Lost Boys was. She about. probably thought it was yeah. a, a Peter Pan movie or some maybe, yeah. maybe. But she looked just turned off by the whole conversation. I actually ended up. I did artwork for a group of male strippers who called themselves the Lost Boys. Uh, and when I was in my wow. early twenties, I my had to do a graphic <laughs> art arts, and it was just like a, a art? like the silhouette of arts. a naked dude in front of a moon, a full moon. And how do and you know he's naked? The Lost Did it have Boys, like a silhouette outlines, of an erection. <laughs> outlines. Oh God. <laughs> And, so, and his glowing red his eyes, profile, glowing, then. and he's sort of the side, oh, kind of the side, God. just kind of to the side. And then, and then, and then uh, his glowing red eyes, big full moon behind him, and not the full was this moon. A, was this a paying gig? <laughs> this was a paying gig. Oh, yeah. yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't draw this logo for free. <laughs> But uh, yeah, when you're a freelancer, you, yeah, just, you just whatever pays, on. you whatever, just start. Whatever pays yeah, the rent. that's right. You know, just uh, Wolfman's got an art. I mean, I've told there you before you about that. I've done, I've done commercials, television commercials for strip clubs. So nice. Yeah, like, you, you know, know it, 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 they got money. Like a lot of moist dollar bills. Yes, a, lo- <laughs> a whole little silver uh, pouch, pouch full <laughs> of of moist one dollar bills. Uh, Ninety nine. So and 44 cents worth, which we did. We never revealed what that was, did we? No. Are we going to reveal um, or are you going to leave it on a cliffhanger? No, no, I won't leave it on a cliffhanger. I think this, if they've made it all I the way. I should cut right here. You have been listening to the Sleepless Nights podcast. Right. No one is. No one has listened <laughs> all the way to the end of this. We are, there's nobody listening. Um, they gave up when they're like, Paul said he's doing his own podcast. Yeah. yeah Fuck, we're out. It, we're out. <laughs> Um, so, uh, we got this weird pouch and it had $99 and 44 cents. And I vaguely remembered that there was a, uh, a movie with a title playing off the old, I believe it was ivory soap commercial where it said the old ivory soap commercial was 99 and, and 44, 100 pure, I think was, was what they do, used to say in the soap commercials that it was almost a hundred percent pure. Um, and, uh, there's a movie called 99, uh, and 44, 100% dead. 
and it is from and we discovered it and it was an actual movie it was from 1974 and so uh we haven't watched this i've heard of the film uh but we'll watch it and maybe it's something that we'll end up doing for our our friend vincent spellbinder who gave us a hundred bucks um and uh in a box full of fart yeah before he you know kills us in our sleep <laughs> oh, and on God. that note <laughs> wow good night everybody you have been listening to the sleepless nights podcast or should we say podcast podcast emphasis on the odd our theme is by mars homeworld at dead house music our opening announcement is by ophelia necro she does a radio show called Suicide Watch. And you can reach Mr. Lobo at cinemainsomnia.com or find me on YouTube, YouTube slash Mr. Lobo, M I S T E R L O B O. Mr. Lobo on Facebook, Facebook slash M R dot L O B O, or on Twitter, at Mr. Lobo, M I S T E R L O B O. Or you can find myself, Paul Sanders, or better known as Besto TV, at besto.tv. On YouTube, slash Besto TV. On Twitter, at Besto Prod, P R O D. And on Facebook, Besto TV. If you want to place an advertisement with this podcast, and gosh, why wouldn't you? Uh, we could be talking about you right now. Contact us, Mr. Lobo at cinemainsomnia.com. That's M R L O B O at sign C I N E M A. I-N-S-O-M-N-I-A dot com. Or support us on Patreon. Patreon supporters get to hear this podcast before anyone else and a lot of other great stuff. Right, Paul? Uh, sure. <laughs> Doesn't get it better than that, right? So come join the fun at patreons.com slash cinema insomnia. That's patreon.com slash cinema insomnia. Please stay up with us next week for another Sleepless Nights podcast, or should we say, podcast. Podcast. The best thing about being an insomniac is never having to say goodnight. Good night. <laughs>